Welcome to the uh, West Ham Minds channel. It's the West Ham match review show. It's a little bit later than I wanted to put it out there. Um, but yeah, that, that was a very, very disappointing result. Performance, embarrassing. You don't want to lose London derbies, but certainly this season, as we all know, we've been very, very poor against Chelsea. And yep, very, very poor result against Spurs today. Um, really difficult to to work out where to start with this. Really, we I mean, it's just not one reason behind what's going on this season at West Ham and what's gone on today and what could happen going forward. There's many many reasons. Really, um, we can start off by saying that the West Ham board um, is at fault. The West Ham board is at fault. They run the club, they make the decisions of sacking managers or getting rid of managers or installing new managers, whether that's installing Lopetegui, whether that's installing Tim Steiton. On the back of that, um, Steiton and Lopetegui are largely responsible for managing the club on the pitch. Tim Steiton is largely responsible for signing players' recruitment that together equals the club on the pitch so that in itself is a major point of where the fault lies um it seems to me that unfortunately it's it hasn't worked out for Lopetegui at West Ham yes it's very very early but listen the premiership the modern game it doesn't really hang around for anyone it's a results business it's a bit of a performance business as well um, I mean, we'll go into one or two other things. That's just one of the major major things for me is that the, the board have selected the wrong manager, really. We could never go into who's actually out there, who's on their list, who wanted who. We don't know who Tim Stein really wanted. Um, Sullivan seems to have the final vote. But that's kind of the major, major blame is it looks like it, it's the end for Lopetegui. I think whether that's next week, whether that's in a month or Christmas or March, I don't see a future for Lopetegui. It just hasn't worked out. Um, I don't know, you know, whether... I mean, the, the other thing about it is obviously Tim Steiton, who's largely responsible for, for the recruitment drive, the scouting. And there's, there's been one or two major, major mistakes in the transfer market. We can see, you know, not signing Duran signing full Krig, who up to now, you know, whether that's through injury, whatever, is not not being able to be part of the team for the manager. That's a huge, huge thing for West Ham. Looking at the average age today, it's still 28-something for West Ham. And so the board, again, after so many years, have been unable to sign a striker that that kind of works for West Ham and the manager unable to really get a manager in that that the fans are happy with going forward whether that's in terms of performances um and points and actual results that that, that kind of carries on and then how are you going to recruit a manager who for me the technical director sporting director call you what you want the manager the owner i know some clubs brentford brighton it works but it's it's very very difficult for west Ham. maybe they're through that transition period but I mean, Full Krig was bought by Tim Steiton, but how can you buy him if the manager didn't want him? He doesn't fit into the manager's way of playing. And coming to that, we don't know how the manager wants to play. It's getting very, very complicated. You, I mean, does he want to do 4 3 3? Does he want to do this 4 1 4 1? The defending is just alarming, you know. We went 1 0 up, but mustn't forget, in my view, the first half was bad. I thought Spurs. Unlucky not to be 2-3 up at half-time. We were carved open time and time again. As happened in, in many, many halves this season. Things like you see, like we can see the goal, and then it's like, where, where's our full? Where's Wan Bissaka as an example? He's not even in our own half. Antonio, it's not his fault. We continue to play him. He doesn't really offer much. He doesn't press, which is quite important for me when the team are starting attacks opposition. That's a huge, huge disadvantage. Um, it's like playing with 10 men um, alongside, coupled with that, like I said, the defending is all over the place. The marking is all over the place. The second half, we just sat back like with David Moyes. I mean, what was the what was the point in that? We were just encouraging attack upon attack. And, and with that, 
it's only going to be a matter of time before Tottenham are going to score. It, it, it was there's no logic to what we're doing. Like I said, we didn't defend from the front with Antonio. Of course, one or two players had okay performances in there. You know, we don't need to dissect each player or player ratings or who's man of the match, who's the worst man of the match. We don't need to really go into the kudos thing or how each goal was done. I don't just don't. I just don't think it's, it's that kind of moment for any channel. I, I just want to talk about the underlining problem, which is that the board have made a mistake. They they've instructed Lopetegui. And secondly, they need to monitor what's going on with Tim Stighton. Some of the signings have been alarming. I mean, you, like I said, Falkirk, 27 million on him. Galermi, the, the Brazilian lad, over 20 million on him. They look like Falkirk signings to me. That's 15 million plus worth of signings where the manager just can't use them. You know, Lopetigi has got loads of issues, right? But there's a few from Tim Stighton that ha hasn't helped Lopetegui. Kilman is definitely Lopetegui signing. And and even, yeah, we've conceded 4-1. But Kilman in many, many parts of the game, again, was very, very good. You know, there's only so much some you, know, you can do with what's going on in and around him, really. Um, and then, yeah, just, yeah, we're playing this 4-1, 4-1 system. I get it. Rodriguez was very good in the first half, was mopping up a lot. Um, but then there's just too, I don't know. There's just too many issues for me in terms of creativity. Still, um, Bowen um, kind of in and out of the game again, like he has been in many many games this season. He's nowhere kind of near that peak form he's shown last couple of years. Um, um, Kudos was um, trying to make things happen. Was was much more involved than, than ever. Um, and yeah, obviously got frustrated, got sent off. He's never, never looked really happy this season either. And underlining of that fact, I, I think he's probably told the club, I'm, I'm going to go in the summer and they've kind of agreed. So that doesn't really help anything. Um, Bowen as captain is not really pleased a lot of fans and that's another issue in itself. Um, Bam Basaka, some fans, rightly so perhaps, are saying you can see why Man United released him. Again, all the players are good in patches throughout the game, isn't it? But at the end of it, you can largely see where they've messed up a lot. So there's no consistency at all. And that shows in the performance in the league tables. We're, what, fifth, sixth from bottom? So it looks like at the moment, at best, we're, we're between kind of 12th and 15th at the moment, really. And I'm sure that's not what that's not good enough for the board. It's not good enough for the outlay in the summer. Um, it's just not looking good. And it looks like, again, like last season... In terms of trying to qualify for Europe, trying to win something, trying to go in in an, in an upward spiral direction, it, it's it's another wasted season where we're just we we're, we're not we're not doing anything good. We're not doing anything good. We're not building anything consistent. We're not signing players that are consistently good, good value. They fit the model. Um, just again, not sure what Lopetegui's trying to do out there. We're just playing good in patches and, and we could be winning 4-3, could be 3-3, we could lose 5-1. It's that kind of game. When a game kicks off, you're pretty certain that West Ham could probably will be 1-0 down within 10 minutes or will definitely concede straight after half time. You know, and what what kind of message does that tell you? It's, it's, it's a team that is slightly too old compared to other teams. Um, like I said, we have got a few in individuals in there that are good, but that's not really a team. Um, is there enough leaders out there? If you're trying to p play this competitive, high technical football that the manager wants, I know Suchek always gives 110%, but is he is he the kind of player that would fit into top six club? Because at the end of the day, we're trying to be top six, right? Top seven, trying to qualify for Europe. Would Suchek fit into that top seven? Would Rodriguez get into that top six, top seven? You know, there's lots of things we're not sure about. Uh, Paqueta, by his high standards, oh, we know all the reasons what's going on off the pitch. It's just not good enough, is it, really, when we really look at it, you know? It's not really good enough. I know a lot of you guys love Paqueta. Bit of a folk, folk, you know, yeah, bit of a cult figure at West Ham, whatever. But when you deep, deep down look at it, most of those players, is they're just... They're, they're not being consistent enough. And again, listen, that, that could be down to the tactics. It could be um, a little bit of um, not quite on, on the same page as the manager. That's an issue in itself. Um, I think the days are numbered for Lopetegui. I think it's the pressure's building. 
yeah, he, he looked very, very upset. It took him a long time to come for the interview, whether that says something. I don't know what's gone on in the dressing room. We've obviously seen, you know, when he's done really, really early substitutions, how, how badly that's gone down with the players. It's just, just all over the place. Alvarez, I mean, long term to me, it looks like he's going to be sold as well. I think in the summer or in the winter, he's he, he doesn't seem to be the player that can that could consistently not get yellow cards and can consistently play well with the ball at his feet. Carlos Soler, we've not really seen anything since he's kind of largely been out the game. We again don't know why he came in, what he can offer. Um, Bissaka, like I said, most of the time defending is just not there. In patches, of course, he can run with the ball and do one or two other things. But due to perhaps manager tactics, sometimes he's not even defending past the halfway line. And then our centre-backs have to scramble down his side and try to try to stop things happening, which again leaves us one number short in the centre-half section. It's it's just on, you know. And then the kind of Areola. I mean, I always said Areola, for me, I'm neutral on him. It's up in the air. But he again is having many, many games where he's below par whether that's communication coming out, shot stopping, this distribution, it's just too many problems. Too many players consistently not on it. The manager doesn't seem to have a grip of what the hell he's trying to do. There's one or two big signings that haven't worked out for West Ham that are costing us. The board looks like I've chosen the wrong manager. Looks like the chemistry between Stuyton, Sullivan and Lopetegui just ain't there. It's not working out. All of these things together is what's happened today, what's contributed today. It's not one thing, right? And that's why you look at the league table and it looks like, yep, yeah, we're 15th, we're 16th. And that's about as good as it's going to get. We're just above the bottom three, bottom four worst teams in the league. And like I said, after that, outlay in the summer of, of kind of good amount of money we, we, we've spent we don't seem to be going in any any good direction you know and and I don't know it's a mish it's a mishmash of a team mishmash of performances and and a mishmash of a league table position what we're doing we're gonna what we're gonna do we're gonna out of typically every five games we'll be lucky to win one we're probably going to lose three and we're going to draw one and that's how we're going to... And that's similar to what I was saying under David Moyes, isn't it? We haven't progressed upwards. Yes, it's early days. Yes, some of you guys want to be lulled to low fatigue, but I'm, I, I can only comment on what I'm seeing. And, and, and it doesn't make me want to go to the games. It doesn't make me get excited. And, I, and I, don't, I don't know what we're trying to do. I don't know what our tactics are. We don't defend as a group. We're not organised. When we attack without having a... A focal point up front instead of Antonio we struggle we can't hold the ball up he doesn't press he doesn't make those runs that that make the differences when you've got a striker you know it's this is it's nonsense it's nonsense and the board have got to look at themselves I think and really decide what looks like well historically they don't really rush forward and they'll probably let it go a few more bad games and then they'll think about okay let's give him another four He'll probably win one in those four, then he'll stay. Then we're in suddenly in December. Then we're definitely looking at no European football, let alone a top 10 finish. And then they're gonna probably going to look at one or two people that the agents recommend who've out of contract. And it'll be like a caretaker patch. So that's another two seasons gone down the drain. And then by the end end of it with no European football, we're not going to keep players like Paqueta, you know, and, and people like, um, 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 uh, what's his name? Well, Oh, bloody all over the place. Um, kudos and people like that. They're just not going to hang around. So it's going to get more and more difficult to have a stable team. And even Bowen, I mean, he might start thinking, I'm in my twilight in my career. I need to be playing in, in the European competition at least, you know. So it's not going to be looking good. And, and the more this carries on, the harder it will get for the new manager coming in. Because I do feel there will be some kind of change coming up at some point. That would be more and more difficult. How much we've got left in the kitty for January, I don't know. Um, but lots of mistakes in the transfer window, I think. Lots of mistakes by the new manager. Um, lots of mistakes by the board. So all three of these things are contributing to a shit show of a season, really. And, and unfortunately, we all were very, very positive. I was trying to be positive when the season started. 
You know, I, I, I didn't have Lou Petigi in my choice as a manager. I was looking at, obviously, looking back the previous 12 months, consistently looking at Unai Emery and Pochettino, just looking at sort of the sporting Lisbon, Almiron, people like that, right? But when Lou Petigi comes in, he selected the West Ham manager, then, of course, I'm positive, I'm happy, I'm excited. I want to back, you know, I just want to be positive after two, three years of up and down with David Moyes. Um, and then obviously, you know, quite happy about Tim Stein and hoping he'll he'll work closely with the manager. We'll buy some really really good players that we all on the same page. And it's just not happened for me, I think. And it's just disappointing, I think, um, what's happening. And we're not really, yeah, nothing's going in the right. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. But for me, the excitement already has just gone out the season, and it's just back to feeling like I used to when. David Moyes was David Moyes was around really so that, yeah that's it from me again yeah I'm not doing that many shows as I used to a bit busy in my life and and what's happening on the pitch ain't really making me that excited I want to do more shows I do want to discuss West Ham things it's just it's just becoming a bit of on the back burner for me the whole club and what's going on unfortunately and I'm just ending up thinking well just not bothered about not not that excited about West Ham anymore just doing other things in my life and then and days like today make me want to come on the channel and just just share my hurtful feelings with you guys really so let's see what the days and up and coming weeks bring West Ham but looks like it's another season that's not going anywhere and and the board I think are definitely going to regroup next couple of days and they were said to be concerned before today and this is going to make the position even worse and I mean, yeah, there were footage of Karen Brady at the ground and one or two other things. So let's see what happens. But it looks like um, there could be a change in the management, I think. And again, don't ask me who I want to be the manager. A lot of you talking about Graham Potter and things like that. I ain't got a clue, mate. I haven't got a clue. Just see what happens, really. So that's it from me. As you can see, just not feeling it.